Hey everyone, it's Jeff and today I'm finally giving you a tour of my home theater slash movie room. Now, if you've been following the channel, I've been working on this room for the last five or six months, goes back into 2023. We needed to do a complete gut job on the basement and get everything out of here. We did a new rug, we did some new paint. I set up my home theater system again, uh, replaced everything, got some new speakers did a ton of work. So I'm going to show you all of that in this video. We'll talk through some of the equipment I have. We'll talk through the rug, the paint, everything I used, give you an idea of what you can do with a smaller space like mine, because I'm probably only working with about 350, maybe 400 square feet, which is great. I'm not complaining, but it's not quite as large a basement as other people might have. So I'll show you kind of what we did to maximize the space and what we're using it for now. All right. So here is a look at the space. Um, now this is a multi-use space, which it did not used to be. I used to work right here. My desk was right here. Um, I did the podcast right here. I had all my home office stuff. Now it's kids stuff. So we've got like a mud room situation with, uh, clothes, jackets, shoes, some stuff left over from a party stuff. I got to bring to the dump when it opens recycling, like, and then we have a storage room through there, which has our furnace. So that's like the other part of the basement which we're not using for anything but storage and then you do have the stairs up to the uh, first floor and the garage door right here so like I said it's not a massive massive space it's a little bit uh, smaller of a space but the rug is brand new we um, pulled up all the old stuff we had a local carpet company come in support local business always um, and they did this. It was probably a couple thousand dollars. It was an old ratty rug in here, which was terrible. Replaced it with this nice new gray one, which made the room look so much better. And then we also painted the whole uh, wall. So each section, everything is painted. And it's this new color. I think it was Sherwin Williams or Benjamin Moore, one of the two. It was like their color of the year. And it's I'll, I'll put a link in the in the video description if you're interested, but it's not black. It's not gray. It's not blue, navy blue. It's like somewhere in between, but I love the way it looks. We uh, really like this color. We painted all the baseboards. We painted all the trim. Everything looks nice and fresh now. So this half of the room, if we walk over here, walk with me for a second. So this half of the room, like I said, this is like kid stuff. So we got cubbies here. We got some kids toys. Um, they come down here and hang out. The dogs come down here and hang out. Uh, they've got their toys over here. They've got their shoes and everything to go out the door. So now it's more of a family space, which is really nice. But let me show you what I did over here with the home theater space. All right, so here's the theater space. Um, you'll notice immediately, I don't have the home theater seats I had, the recliners. Um, we brought those up to my parents' house in Maine. They're in the basement now. We may use those again, but for now, it's a family space, so I want it to be family friendly. We brought this sectional down from upstairs. It's got four seats, there's four of us. It's a little bit comfier, a little bit cozier, and we can all sit and watch movies together as a family, especially as the kids get older. That'll be huge. Um, then over here, I've got my posters. I had these up before, but it's Jaws, Hereditary, and Halloween, and then Halloween 3. Um, Halloween 3 is from Screen Factory. The Halloween and Jaws are just you know, from movieposters.com and then the hereditary, this is actually an original uh, theatrical poster. So this was in a theater somewhere in the US. This was the teaser poster and it's an original, which is super cool. And then you'll see, I'll get into the equipment, but the surrounds are up there. Now turning this way, we've got the shelving. This is from Modern Shelving. I did a whole video on this, but we can take a closer look at it. I'll give you some more details. And so here is a closer look at the shelving. This is all pole mounted shelves. They're all aluminum. If you get a closer look here, black aluminum shelves with the silver poles. I kind of liked the contrast. Sometimes I wish I had gone all black, but the black and the silver is a nice contrast. And this holds about a thousand movies, floor to ceiling shelving all custom built, uh, custom designed. They fit movies perfectly. As you can see, height wise, they maximize. Well, 
I worked with modern shelving to maximize the space. If you want to learn more, you can contact me. I have a discount code so you can set this up in my little three bay shelving system here. Uh, they're actually selling now as like their primary DVD shelves. So it's really nice. It just like built a, a media wall, which I really love and you know, got to keep the kids off the bottom of it, but still super easy to access. Looks great. Looks super clean. One of my favorite pieces I've ever had. For shelving all right so now let's get down to the home theater system we'll go through all the equipment and i'll tell you what's new first of all we got new subwoofers i have a subwoofer on the left and i have a subwoofer on the right those are sb 1000s from svs sound they look small they pack a huge punch and having two of them which is the first time i've ever had two subwoofers i only ever had one huge one I really like having two. I think it really balances things a little bit better. I also changed my front speakers. So these uh, front left and right speakers are now SVS Prime bookshelf speakers. Previously, I was using their tower speakers, but with the subwoofers, I didn't have a ton of room to put towers. And so I went with the bookshelves. They sound amazing. Again, they may not look super big. Towers look like all impressive and crazy. I love the look of the towers too, but these pack a punch. And then I've had this same prime center speaker from SVS Sound for 10 years now. Still rocking it, still using it, still love it. Now for some equipment down here, I've got a Denon AVR 2600XH. It's a Dolby Atmos uh, 7.1 or 5.1.2 receiver. So that's what I use for my receiver. Uh, I've got a Panasonic Hi-Fi VCR, which is a great little player. And then I've got my Reavon 4K UHD player. This is like, it's like 1500 bucks, I think. It's a French company. It's really high quality. You could compare it to like the Panasonic UB9000, uh, I believe it is. So really nice. And one thing I've done, and this is like a little bit of a pro tip, um, I've been running the audio and video separately so i run an hdmi cord from the player directly into the tv for video and then from the player down to the receiver for audio i was having some hiccups running both through the same player into the tv or sorry into the receiver and then out to the tv so i just brought the video straight into the tv straight to the source then i don't have to worry about any weird encoding going on and it's helped the video stop skipping it was like a miracle fix so if you have a higher end player where you can run video straight to TV and only run audio through your receiver, I'd recommend it. It was an easy fix for me and I noticed a lot more 4K discs uh, were, were running perfectly, not skipping. And then I just have this little fireplace, electric fireplace console down here uh, with some of my stuff like Columbia Classics and Lord of the Rings. Uh, we got some box sets over here, Harry Potter, Twilight, uh, Jurassic World, you know, all the good stuff. So. I have this down here. It's actually a great space heater. It gets cold in the basement. Very, very cold, especially in the winter. That space heater, you turn that on, turn the fireplace effect on. It looks really cool. And it honestly, it heats the place up in like 20 minutes. So now moving on up, this is my LG OLED C2 65 inch 4K TV. Um, I know it's a little bit high, but that's just where the mount was when we moved into the house. So it is what it is. Um, I could probably go to a 75 inch at some point. I would have to bring this down a little bit to make space for the, um, the larger diagonal screen, but I could, I have a little bit of room, uh, maybe a 70 inch, but probably 75. But for now with this little screening area that I'm in, which is only like, I don't know, 10 feet wide. I think it's a, it's a perfect TV. I sit, let me think 10 feet from the tv at most maybe even like probably even more like eight feet so it's a pretty good size and then up in the corners i have my svs prime elevation speakers mounted these as close to the ceiling as i could on both the left and the right side and these serve as my height speakers they take most of the atmos effects they're down firing speakers you can see how they're angled downwards towards the towards the listener being me so love those i've had those for like six or seven years they've been my go-to height speakers and 
they do a great job honestly they can also work as like bookshelves surrounds they're super versatile and we had talked to svs about maybe putting one up there on the beam and trying to put another one over here but with the shelving and everything i just i figured let's just put them in the front stage let's just let them work from there and it's been working out great so far one other thing i did which i highly highly recommend hiding wires and before you yell at me yeah i i still need to paint these the same color as the wall to truly hide them I think I'll do that. I don't know. I kind of like the white contrast too, but all the wires that run from the receiver to these prime elevations, they're hidden in those strips on the wall. So you don't see any wires. You don't see any wires going to the TV. It's a very clean look. And then what I did was I ran wire up here and with the drop ceiling, I ran it along the ceiling and then it came out over here so that wire you can't even see on those back surrounds it runs through the ceiling runs all the way to the front and it's completely completely hidden and then it runs down here and into the receiver so it's super clean i'm excited i did this for a long time um, i have not been hiding wires wires were everywhere i'm glad i took the time had the patience did it this time it looks so much better you feel so much better sitting down and watching something not looking at wires everywhere. So I highly, highly recommend that. And like I mentioned, just a quick look at the back surrounds. These are prime um, satellite speakers, very heavy. They look small, but again, pack a serious punch. And I have one on each side. Again, we, we had talked about maybe like, we had talked about over here, maybe like kitty, corny, uh, kitty cornering one with a mount into that corner. But if I did that over there, I don't really have a space to mount over there i don't have a corner because this is just an open wall so i didn't bother and i just put them kind of behind uh behind the listener behind the viewer and yeah they probably in an ideal situation should be lower down at like ear height but i don't have an ideal situation i have kids small kids who would rip those off the wall and rip wires out and bang the speakers so you know you always have to make do with what you have in your house and what you're able to do. So that's the setup. And like I said, it's probably like 300 square feet max. And I, you know, chopped that in half to give the kids room to play and hang out. Um, and I'm really excited about it because they can come down here. My son can watch a movie now and it's like not super hectic. I don't have a ton of stuff everywhere. Most of my collection now is upstairs in my home office where I work. That's also where I record most of the videos and all that stuff. You'll see it on the new podcast I'm launching. So if you want a tour of that, I can do that as well because it's a super cool little home office that I built. I mean, nothing crazy. Just took a spare room we had, threw some shelves in, threw a desk in, but like did some work on the upstairs uh, but this was I'm really happy with this now I have like my own little screening room and yeah is maybe the TV is not perfect height although I like it we sit really um, kind of it's not a very high ceiling so we sit pretty low and the TV angles down and it works when we're kind of lounging in the chaise lounge or whatever but it's also just you know the moral of the story here is do what you can right? Not everybody can have seven speakers. Maybe you need a sound bar. Maybe you need two speakers. Uh, maybe you can do five. Maybe you can do 11. Everybody's situation is different. And, you know, of course, SVS was super helpful. I talked to them about setting this up, the new room. They suggested the double subwoofers, the bookshelf speakers. They really helped out with this a lot. And of course, they had recommendations. And one of theirs was like, put the elevation speakers as close to the ceiling as you can. I was able to do that. I wasn't doing that before, and I should have been. So that was great. But, you know, could I have put them on the beam? Could I have uh, put the, the rear surrounds somewhere else? Like, technically, I could have, but I didn't for numerous reasons. And it's just whatever your situation is. You kind of got to go with what you can do in your room and your situation. Do you have family? Do you have small kids? Like, all these things matter. And at the end of the day, it's still amazing just to have speakers and surround sound and Am, am I in a perfect Dolby Atmos listening environment? No, but who knows that? Like, honestly, nobody, nobody knows. I don't know. I've stopped caring. You know what? It sounds great. I've set it up to the best of my ability. I'm happy with it. I'm not going to tweak out about, ah, those should have been six inches lower, six inches higher. Like in a perfect world, sure. But I'm not worried about that. 
and I love the way that everything is set up. I was really happy with it. I love the new paint, the rug. Like it took us a long time, but it was so worth it because this basement was so dirty, so dingy. And I'm glad we took the few months and did the work. It took a very long time to clean this out and get it ready and get the rug in and all that, but it was, it was well worth it. So if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments. I'm gonna try to put everything in the video description from speakers, receiver, player I use, the TV I use, the shelves behind me. Um, I'll put the paint in. Uh, I got the rug from a local uh, carpet company, so I don't know that I can tell you which rug I got, but it was, you know, just a typical basement, gray basement rug. You don't have to get anything super um, high quality. It's a basement. It's going to be heavy foot traffic, so get something, you know, durable. That's really all that matters. But I've watched a bunch of movies down here since we did it. I just hadn't gotten around to recording the video yet, but it's been an awesome experience. I love this little screening nook I have. I love the, you know, the seating, the whole thing. I just, coming down here, it's, it, I feel so much better about it than I did before. And it's exciting. So I'm, I was happy to share it with you all. And hopefully, you know, maybe you got some inspiration or whatever, got some ideas out of this too. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more like this. Movies, home theater, physical media, my collection. Just, you know, if you just want to hang out, Subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow me on social media. Those links will be in the description as well as right here, the QR code. Um, Instagram's been blowing up, so make sure you're over there doing a ton of content. It's been a lot of fun. So thank you all. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, stay healthy, keep watching great movies, and I'll talk to you all soon.